Hello, hello. Welcome in, everybody, or if anybody's out there yet, I'll give it a couple minutes before we get started and let people join in. Make sure I'm not muted. I think I finally figured this out and remembered to unmute myself when I get started here. So if you are out there, let, let me know that you can hear me. Um, we are in this map. I forget exactly. Oh, it's right down here. The name. I left it as it is so I could remember. The Black Dragon Canyon in Utah. And we already have demand for things because I have unlimited money and unlock all on. I just want to have a pretty cool, chill time messing around with stuff and, and not worrying too much about the, the mechanics of the game. Um, but I also have the theme texture replacer thing. So I have this one on the Rockies Sandy, which I just downloaded earlier today. Um, but there's a couple different ones uh, that, that kind of fit with this map theme. So we have... This is not the one that I think was made for this map. I believe the desert map theme is the one that this was designed for, which looks like this. And then we have the Rockies Sandy. So cheaty, very cheaty. I just want to have a simple, fun time and just mess around with all kinds of stuff. Just screw around, basically. So we've got the Rockies Sandy one here. I think this one is, is deserty. But no, okay, it's more grassy, so not that one. And then the alp, no, not alpine. Definitely not what we want here. Uh, arid theme is like another kind of deserty one. I like the the like the red sand, but I think I'll just keep it with the the Rockies sandy one. Okay, so we'll do this. And uh, I forget exactly what all mods I've actually installed on here. And I don't even know if there's a way to see them all at once. Well, obviously not in there. I mean, I can see them in there, but like, yeah, so I have move it, extended radio, anarchy tree controller, prop the growable, plop the growables, and then obviously the map stuff. Um, but yeah, we're just going to mess around and see what's going on in here. So we have the starting map tile. Which, I love it. I love it already so far. So, like, it's, I haven't really taken a major look at the map. So, I guess we can start with that. So, we have this pretty intensely, pretty intense intersection going on here. I mean, like, it's simple, but it's big. Um, which makes sense for, like, this kind of area. If you think about it in real life, it probably would be a very lowly populated kind of place. So, you wouldn't need this massive interchange that doesn't have, like, things crossing and that kind of thing. I've loved seeing what people are already doing with this map, though. I like how it goes into a dirt road here, too. So, where do we want to start? Do we want to try putting something up along kind of the river here? Why don't we just, like, unlock a bunch of map tiles first? Hello, Ryan. Welcome in. Happy to have you here. And Roxy Sinister, of course. Happy to have you here, too. Let's see. Why don't we just open up, like, a bunch? Why not? And then, so I like that it's all just like a simple highway and we can just kind of take roads right off of it if we want to. I think that's how I'm going to start things. And I'll do highway road and I'll start with like a two lane one here. I think I also got the extended road upgrades. And so now I can like make tunnels and keys really simply. So that'll be nice. That will probably be one of those things that I keep. And um, uh, what would you what what if you build San Bernardino? You know, I should actually know more about what that is since it's really close to me, but I don't. But no, I know it's a pretty populous place, so no, I don't think a big interchange would be out of place there. But we don't have anybody in this town yet, so this one's fine. 
Um, I lost where I was. Oh, yeah. So with I think I'll probably keep this in like Pickleton as well. This um, this mod because it's just super, super handy. So I think what I want to do is get a upgrade this to like a four lane one. Upgrade this to a four lane one. I'm really bad with math. Why don't I just draw them out first and then I'll figure out where I want the extra lanes to go. We'll go like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Whoops. And we'll clean this up a little bit. So let's see. Four lanes this way. That looks terrible. Didn't like that at all. The the giant city behind Riverside in the desert. Yeah, like I know where I like I know of it, and I'm sure I've sort of been there at one point or like driven through it past it etc i had a friend that used to live in riverside i think or that was like the most notable place next to where he lived um so i know i've been through it but like i've never i don't really go there well, hopefully i can get this to go in there we are Turn our snapping back on okay so I think that has like all the lanes that we need, right? No, I want a three lane asymmetrical one here. Namesake is probably the largest county in SoCal, most of the desert between Riverside and Needles. Yeah. And I think I want to say my wife at one point lived somewhere in that area. Um, but that was a long, long time ago. Like way different now than it was, I think. At least the way she describes it. So, okay. And then from here... We'll take this out a little bit further. Let's turn on our contours because I feel like this is going to get crazy real fast. Um. Okay, so, oops, I kind of wanted that to be a windy road. I'm from Wales, so right-hand drive breaks my brain. <laughs> that's that's exactly how I would feel trying to do, like, left-hand drive. Even if I ever build, like, a European-themed city, which, like, properly, I have, like, a European-themed area in Pickleton, but it's still just, you know, right-hand drive and normal, very American, just with European-themed buildings. Um, I don't think I don't think I could do the. Uh, I don't think I could do left-hand drive. Or, yeah, left-hand left-hand drive. It would just it would just totally mess with me trying to trying to, like I would be making roads backwards every single time. Okay, so we're going to smooth this out just a little bit so we can get a nice little incline down here with our little dirt road. Nope. Oh. <laughs> and we have a fire already. So that's fun. Where is it at? I was like, oh, it's fine. We can turn on disasters. It won't be a problem. But even worse, how about driving? I don't even know what that is. On the left-hand drive streets. Oh, here's our little fire. I mean, I guess I sort of could have expected that there would be some fires on this map. I don't know that. I wonder if, I don't think in the game you can get like random fires in, in the dirt. But like, obviously there's plenty of trees and bushes and stuff. A Hummer. Oh, does the if, if I click on the orange bar, does it take me to it? Is that what happens? The U.S. military version. OK. Is it because they're like they're is it because they're wide that that makes that difficult or to like drive it on the left hand drive streets? Uh, Where was I over here? Somewhere over this way, way over here. I'll just leave that road like that for now yeah because okay so because they're wide i mean i guess that makes sense they're like huge cars i mean even the not military versions are like way too big 
for just like, you know, for average driving, they're a little bit large. I did see a new, I don't know if they've like come up with a new one or something, but I definitely saw one that I'd never seen before the other day. And it didn't actually look too bad. Like, I'm still not a fan of them, but it didn't look too bad. So you sit on the left-hand side of the car driving a truck that is at most... There's like a little heart button right in the way of that last word. Car roads heights and eight feet wide. Eight feet wide. So I, I remember reading once that like the different widths between this. This is like, you know, the kind of weird thing that I do in my free time. Um, Was reading an entire article about the different like widths between different roads or different kinds of roads. So like the distance between a regular street road uh, like the lanes, like how wide they are on a regular street. I put, um, gotta turn off those ads. They drive me crazy. Um, like the width between for the lanes on like a regular street versus like the highway and things like that. I also meant to turn the volume down. It sounds really loud to me. I don't know if it sounds loud to you guys. So if it's, if you can hear the music and you want to hear more, let me know. I can turn it up, but, um, I don't want it to be. I don't want to feel like I'm shouting. <laughs> okay, so we'll grab another little road out here. Kind of just bring it right up to the end. And I'll make my own little roundabout instead of using the custom ones. Or the, uh, the like, automatic ones. Because I want to be able to, like, put things on it. Okay. And let's see. I guess I'll try to mess around with the uh, the beach property stuff a little bit. Not really, I don't know that it's really a beach, but I still just want to check out the new assets. Can you hear any of the noise from the game? Or did I mess up something completely? My desktop audio seems like it's playing, so, oh, I guess I need to, like, actually give us some, uh, some power and water, of course, too. Um, how does this map set up anyway? Got power here. So I guess I will just set up a transformer somewhere over, over here. Take a little dirt road out this way. I'm gonna curve it around, meander it aimlessly. You hear me and nothing more, interesting. I wonder why that is. But I guess if you guys don't mind, we'll just leave it like that because I don't know what's up. I don't know what's up with that. I wonder if that has always been the case. Like every time I've done lives and nobody just just nobody ever told me that there was no music playing. Um, OK, so we'll drag this out. Oh, wait. Where is. Oh, so there isn't an outside power connection. There should be some underground power li lines and pipes near the railroad tracks as well. So I just need to hook it up with one of these regular old guys here then? No, that's not it. It's been so long since I've actually like started a city, I totally forget how to do it now been playing in the one city all this time okay we have water pipes here and i guess we have some some underground pipes here so i guess we'll use these we'll just drag them all the way down the highway it's too long interesting That's interesting. Why is that? Okay. I've never seen that before. I didn't realize there was like some sort of limit on how long you could make them. Okay. Can I get rid of this view so that I can actually see the road? There we go. And I guess I don't need a transformer then.
Okay, so the map creator set up uh, some square shapes that run out the map to the north. Okay, very cool. Oh, there's our, our fire still going off over there. Um, okay, and then now we need the water one, obviously. So we'll bring this down. And I guess I guess we'll play it, you know, how you're supposed to and keep it underneath the roads. Right where they belong and whatnot. How how City Planner plays likes to say it. Oops. That was a mistake. Has anybody else noticed that, like, the I button doesn't get rid of the menu like it used to anymore? Am I missing something? Is it user error? Am I just bad at this? Oh, man, I didn't use the double one. Okay, so I gotta try that again. Need the water pipe. And the sewer pipe. Dang. Oh, I guess I could really just you know, upgrade that, and that would be probably an easier way to do things. I promise you guys, I have all, I have played this game before. I sort of do know what I'm doing. Yeah, you notice that, okay, you notice that too, with the, um, the I button. Yeah, it's like driving me nuts, because I'm so used to it now, and it just doesn't work. And, like, you can still get to that view, but you have to, like, manually close it out. Like, click the X button. It's from the update. Okay. I'm sure they'll get around to it. I like how that's, like, one of the main things that people have complained about is that view and how blinding it is. And it's, like, one of the things they didn't fix. Or actually they made worse. Like, now you can't even get out of it. <laughs> I mean, I know I know that things are a little bit more complicated than that. You change like one thing and it messes up all kinds of stuff. Overlapping items. I assume it's overlapping with my power line, but can we fix this? There we go. Okay. And now we're ready. Now we're finally ready for things to be built. I can't stand the whiteness of those screens. Yeah, it gets like, it just gets to be too much. And and sometimes you can't see between like the, um, between the zoning tiles here as gray and like as opaque as they are on top of the white filter. Like it's so hard to see what you're looking at when you're trying to build things. And because, like, it does open different menus. Like, if you hit the I button, it it opens things, but it doesn't get rid of the white filter. Just switches between these two views. So I don't know what that's about. But I, I don't know if they, like, changed it, too, maybe. And none of us have just, we just haven't noticed. Okay, it says, oh, you know what? No, I thought it was done. Didn't, was, and am I not finished connecting it? The water seems to be running. Oh, the sewage, because I haven't put a sewer place in yet. Uh, so we'll do, I guess, a wastewater treatment plant. Yeah, an advanced, well, wastewater treatment plant, because that's like the only other option that we have uh, other than a poop chute. So we'll do this. One of these over here. Okay, but it still says no power either, so something is not connected. What am I missing? Everything appears to be connected. I don't have any warnings that things aren't connected. Oh, you know what? It's right here. They're not actually connected. There we go. Okay. That should have finally done it. Yes or no?
still doesn't say that it's connected. Lee says, uh, I don't understand why they think the whitewash is a good idea to, at all, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Like, I, it looked way better in the trailers and stuff. Like, it looked like it was going to be really helpful. But in, in in practice, it did not appear to be that way. So I'm not really sure. It's all connected out here. Nothing wrong with this. What am I doing wrong here? Do I still need a transformer or something? I do need uh, I do need the transformer. Okay. There are more fires going on. There we go. Disaster location. Is this a different fire? It's a different fire. I figure I figured that would probably be a problem on this map, though. To be fair, like it is very dry. Okay, so and connect the large power lines to the ones already on the map underground. Oh, okay. So these guys are my power lines, huh? Okay. There we go. I was wondering how come I didn't see any... I thought these... Because I guess because they were blue. I was like, oh, those are the water lines. But no, those are the power lines. Okay. Finally. There we go. And we already have high rent problems. I'm so shocked. I could not be more shocked. <clears throat> oh, city skylines. Okay, so we got the power situation sorted out, though. Um, let's take a look at some of these houses. So we have... Oh, look, they can finally afford rent. There we go. Um... I, I like the new ones. I, I, the some of these level one, some of these level one buildings are a little bit questionable to me as far as like beach properties go. Like I don't really, I don't really consider this much of a beach property, even like a low level one. But something like this is a little bit better. Definitely things like I feel like this one is is pretty legit, pretty on point for like um, a beach kind of property. Build a garbage dump next to it to lower the property values. At least that finally works now, right? Like, supposedly building a... Or, like, land values are properly affected by things like pollution and stuff. Anyone have the cargo harbor bug where route's not showing in the info panel? Ooh, I have not experienced that myself. Um, I did... I mean, it's been a while since I placed my cargo routes. So, and I I recently deleted all of the infra or all of the transit stuff in in my other city. Um, but I didn't delete the cargo lines, so I didn't really take a look at them. Anybody else have that have that problem? That one's a new one for me. I've never heard of that one yet. We have we have seven out of fifteen employees. That, I mean, I know that I you know I built six houses. Of course, we're gonna have an issue with that. But like, I do think it's a little bit weird that we only have like those two options for for sewage, and the one of them is just you know massive. There's our fires over there still, because uh, really we only have the sewage outlet, and that's it, right? Because this is not sewage. This is just regular water production. That's water production, that's water production, that's water production. I feel like we need more options. I don't know what kind of options there are in real life, though, to be fair. So maybe that's just, like, realistic. Um, but let's just keep zoning up some houses over here. I've, which theme do I have on? North American. I haven't actually played with the North American of the uh, beach stuff yet. Only use the European stuff. But that's because the European side has, like, the better signature buildings, I think. I haven't actually taken a look at all of them. Let's do that too. Just for fun. Um, so we have the real estate agent's mansion. For the, this is all the North American stuff. That one over there and that one over here. 
I want to do like a like a DLC overview and kind of show off all of these buildings. But while we're here right now, we can do that live. Uh, so this is the architects one. Or no, no, sorry, real estate. I mean, this feels definitely really beachy compared to like some of the, like some of these just look like a little trailer park or like a little trailer home. And they look exactly like the ones that are in the regular North American stuff. Like this one. This one looks basically like the regular ones that we already have. Except for like they have this little back extension on it. So we're just so hard without everything unlocked on the map. There's nowhere to really dump. Build hole and put poop tube on the shore. <laughs> You know, I think there was, um, they, I'm pretty sure that they fixed this now, but I, there used to be, like, if you built a hole and then put all the crap in the hole and then, like, covered up the hole, um, and then covered up the hole, like, it would, like, it would just disappear. And I know there was, like, a problem where, like, if you built terrain over wherever you were dumping your poop water, if you built terrain over it and then, like, got rid of the terrain, the poop water would go away but i think they fixed it because i did try it in my in my last episode of pickleton because i was gonna build fancy beach houses but like all the poop water was there so i was like maybe maybe this isn't the good the best spot maybe i can get rid of the uh maybe if i can get rid of the poop water this will be a good place to have a beach property but like nobody wants to sp spend beach property money living next to a bunch of poop water but anyway yeah so we'll go over the we'll go over the dlc or the stuff the stuff that came in the dlc so this is one of this is the first unlockable signature building for the North American theme. And I think it goes like 2,500 cells, 10,000 cells, and then like 20 something thousand cells of housing. Honestly, I, I don't blame anybody for not buying it. I wouldn't pay $10 for it. Like I would pay $5 for it because I am like a collector and I'm like addicted to buying dumb things for $5. And $5 just seems so cheap. You know, I mean, but but that it it adds up after a long time and ten dollars is kind of a lot for what you get. I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I wouldn't really suggest anyone spend ten dollars if you bought like the the ultimate edition. It's a good deal because. I think it's what, like 90 bucks for the ultimate edition. And then you get all of the DLCs that come in. So, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a completionist for sure. Um, But like so. When you get the, if you got the ultimate edition and you get all the DLCs like as they come out for the expansion pass or whatever it is, I think even the official, like the full expansion of Bridges and Ports DLC, that's probably going to be full price, $40 to $50. And so just there alone, you already, you've already gotten your money's worth if you bought the ultimate edition because you get like three other DLCs in there. So. But yeah, and I, I don't blame people for not paying the 90 bucks for that either. Like, that's a lot to drop all at once on a video game. Again, I'm like addicted to it. So and, you know, I already had a channel for it. So I, I'm thinking, you know, I'm using it. I'm thinking of it more as an investment for me in that sense. But like, if I was just playing the game, I I would have pre-ordered it like I did probably. But I I wouldn't be buying DLC like that again. Not Not for this price. But so we have the real estate agent's mansion, and I think the benefits are pretty simple. Just plus two well-being, kind of like basically what all the other ones are for the first level stuff. And then, but I like it. I like the, um, I guess like the kind of concrete building texture to it and stuff. Um, and then we have, this one is the, the oh, okay, I knew there was an architect one. Um, so the architect one, which is like uh kind of ugly actually in, in my opinion very green i mean you would think the architect's house would be like the best one in it but it looks pretty simple it's not bad it's just like that one's way cooler already um and then this one does plus four well-being so sa same deal as all the other kind of second level stuff this one is the nice one though so we have the industry moguls mansion um, got a nice little pool out front or out back, I guess. I guess this is probably the front of the building, huh? Very, very mansion-y like. This one's pretty cool. And I like, you know, with mods, I feel like you could probably extend, at least on this side, out a little bit and make a larger kind of port, like, larger asset out of it if you wanted to, um, which is kind of cool. 
But, you know, you would need mods to do that, so. <clears throat> I got the base game on discount the day it released. Yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, I wanted to have it, so I, so I, I bought, you know, I bait. I bought it. I paid for it. I was trying to, like, combine those two words. Um, but I, I wouldn't really... I wouldn't really suggest it to anybody. Unless you just, like, you got money to burn, then sure, go for it. But um, I can't necessarily say spending the, the $90 outright was, like, the most... The best financial decision to make ever, but... I mean, I'm enjoying it still, for sure, but it's a lot of money to drop at once. And then, oh, what are the other things? The only other things that you get in the DLC, so you get those three buildings, you get, you know, the two different housing types, which come with, so it's basically only, it's basically only 10 buildings each. Let's get out of this stupid blue view. Because you get 10, you get 10 assets per theme and they each have different color variants up to like 24 different color variations and then 10 different or I mean uh three different like level progression looks so that's where they get their 30 buildings from but it's really it's really just 10 not another fire um it's really just 10 per theme And then you get then you get like the the upgrades, but it only has three level upgrades. It levels up five levels, but you I think it only changes its as far as I understand it, it only changes the look twice. Which I mean, in theory, we could kind of take a look at it if we open up the um the dev menu here. Eventually, I'm sure like oh you know I have pop the Grobles too. I imagine that that you can probably find it in there too. But buildings residential. Um, we have an A, the wall, no, low. So we have levels one, two, three, four, and five. So it does have five levels, but I would have to place egg every single one of them to see how much, how different they all get. I was like, what is that noise? There's like the water coming, like a water noise coming from the, this building. And I, it was like really throwing me off. Um, let's see. I, can I get out of there? I don't want that anymore. Okay. So, I, I I guess I would have to really take a look at each one of the things to see. And, like, place every single building to see exactly how different they looked. But as far as I know, it's more like that they only have four different looks. Or three different looks per building. And just, like, the different variations, I guess. But... And I mean, the assets look nice. Like, I'm not going to lie that some of them are really nice looking. But, oh, I turned off the music. That's why. Uh, uh, not that anybody can hear it, apparently, anyway. But <laughs> um, but the assets the assets are nice. I just don't know that they're totally worth, like, they're definitely not worth $10. And then the only other thing that you get, aside from the buildings, are the trees. So you get four different trees. Which, I mean, I guess is better because everybody was kind of expecting that we were going to get one tree <laughs> and just four different, like, age groups of it. Like, we were just going to get a baby tree. I want the baby tree. So, I mean, I guess that's better. But I know a couple people have already pointed out, too, like, in some of their reviews and, and just discussions about the DLC that, like, it, it kind of sucks that these trees are locked behind a, a paywall. And, like, they're not even that, I mean, they're cute trees, whatever, they're trees, you know? But, like, $10 for some trees and some signature buildings. And these. Like, that's just, it's it's a lot. I compare it to, you know, as somebody who played, you know, who plays a lot of The Sims and has bought, like, you know, thousands of dollars of, you know, $1,000 worth of DLC for that stupid game. It's like, you know, if you're familiar with The Sims, they have, like, those kits now where they just come with, like, a tiny handful of items and they're five bucks like that's i mean it's worth it if you want those items but it's like you're not your game's not going to be missing stuff without them either um but i feel like this is like it's a nice dlc to have but for ten dollars it's just too much it's just it's just not worth that 
how come these houses won't grow in? Oh, I have no demand for medium or for low density residential. That's why. Ten bucks for trees, knowing Mr. Maison will likely release better versions in two months. Yeah, like things like that too. And with like the mods and eventually the assets. And I mean, of course, you know, console folks are going to be stuck either getting the DLC or going without, which really sucks. But for PC players, of course, we'll have mods and we'll be able to have assets eventually where, yeah, people come up with way better stuff. I mean, we've had, you know, <laughs> we've had official Paradox mods for a week and this is already the stuff that people have come up with. Like this map is incredible. And, you know, just leaps and bounds beyond the base game maps already. Like, just in looks and with the new theme stuff on it, like, it's way better than anything that came in the base game. You know, because, the, you know, and, you know, because modders aren't quite limited in that sense, as, like, you know, the, the actual developers themselves might be for, for doing certain things, because they have to... I know the developers of the actual game have to try to keep in mind that, like, everybody they want to try to make the game as accessible for everybody as possible so they're a lot more limited in you know how detailed some of their things can be like they can't have the most beautiful detailed trees because it's just not going to function on some lower spec machines and they're trying to get that like they're trying to you know bridge that gap for people but but that's what my that's why mods are so cool is because if you do have a nice machine that can handle a little bit extra, you get to in, you know you get to indulge in that stuff. Yeah, the modding communities for 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 anything is just insane. Like I've you know I'm pretty new to PC gaming, and so the only mods that I've ever really played around with before were for The Sims, and even then I, you know I didn't really get extensively into them. I used to do quite I used to download a lot of you know, uh, custom content for the Sims as far as like hair and clothes and things like that. But like, you know, the mods just make things so much easier. There's so many mods for the Sims 4 that are like essential to playing the game. Like people can't even play without them at this point just because they add so much functionality to the game that's missing from the base game. I mean, I think at this point the consoles have better hardware than most of the, yeah, than most of us with the PC. Well, yeah, because, I mean, they're just built to be, like, monstrous machines um, for everybody. You know, PCs can range from, like, you know, a $500 gaming PC is, like, not very good at all, you know, and then you get, like, up to $4,000, $5,000. I have no idea. I don't know what kinds of... People spend crazy money on PCs. But, of course, the the consoles are limited in, like, what they can download as far as, like, code mods and stuff because they're stuck with... I don't know exactly how that works, but I guess it's just like they're they're stuck with what they can they can have. Why is this abandoned? Well, I mean, to be fair, there's absolutely nothing nice in this town yet, so they're probably really unhappy. But yeah, so um, high crime with these twenty houses. Um, but yeah, ten k ten k gaming PC. No way. Nope. Too much for me. Too rich for my blood. Um. And I spent, like, a hefty amount on mine, but, like, not that much. That's a little bit too much for me. So I can't close this menu without getting rid of that. That's annoying. Can I turn off? Nope, I can't turn off the whiteness from this screen. And keep that menu. Uh, I guess I can just, like, use the mini one. My PC, sold, my PC total with accessories, keyboard, monitors, etc. cost me 5000 Ooh, That's a lot. I think mine... I mean... With, I think I got my second monitor, like, for free with Amazon points or something stupid. Um, my regular monitor, I managed to get through work because I needed a screen. And, you know, the gaming monitor was just as much money as a regular monitor. So I went, obviously, with the gaming one. So that stuff was free. But the PC itself was, like, 2500 I think. A little bit more after, like, with, you know... um interest in stuff or whatever because I got it through like a, a you know one of those pay as you go app kind of things one of those like after pay kind of things I forget which one it was I don't think it was actually after pay but it's something like that so we have high crime we've got lack of we got lack of everything but like there's only 26 people here gaming laptop with a big second screen 2k yeah 
Cruise is from 2019 Roxy Sinister, and you paid 850 But you also have said that your computer's a potato, right? Or is that somebody else in the Discord who's always talking about that? I mean, I know, uh, I know, I know old man Greg is always talking about his, his potato PC as well, because he can't even run City Skylines 2, but. Um, let's see. Oh, well, why don't we check out what other mods we have too while we're here? I can ignore all these people being very unhappy with their, with their luxurious beachfront properties that they're not happy with. Oh well, yeah, it's a potato, but that's because it's 2019. Yeah, I mean, I to be fair, that is in in technology age that might as well be like obsolete. Um, uh, yeah, if you can play the game, like that's not too bad. So I think I'm assuming this must be move it, right? What is this? Yep, this is move it. Oh, okay. Now, I've never used Move It in the other games, so like in City Skylines 1, so I have no idea how all this works. But I definitely messed something up already. Now I can't even move it. Oh, well, duh, because you can't move houses. Ever. Duh. Okay. Very cool, though. I feel like if you know more about Move It, this makes a lot more sense. But I never used it before, so it's completely new to me. But let's turn, let's get that. Let's try this again. Back this back up. And another fire again. I wonder, I wonder, has anybody have tried making maps and like, if there's some sort of, um, I don't know, like, statistic or something for, um, for, like, how often certain disasters hit your city? Like, is it just based on climate, or is it totally dependent on things like whether or not you have, uh, you know, like, a lot of trees all close together and stuff? Not connected. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. Um, you can't move houses like you can't like normally move ho houses like once they've been once they've been plopped or once they've been thrown in. Uh, you can't like move them individually. I, I mean, I'm sure with the mod you can. I just meant like, um, I was like gonna try to move it like you could move any other building, but like obviously it doesn't work like that in the regular game. Um, use Shift Alt Control to get extra functions while using Move It. I've yet to use Move It in CS2. I wonder if it still has the option to select a bunch of nodes and set them all to the same height. Um, I think I want to say I watched um, Pilot Build Cities' latest video, and I want to say they maybe had used Moved It. Oh, you know what? No, I think they pre-recorded it before the mods came out, so I don't think I don't think they had Move It. But um, I swear somebody was talking about how that it does not have that functionality yet to like move, select a bunch of nodes and then move them all down together. Okay, so what was it? Shift Alt Control to get extra functions. Shift Alt Control. Node manipulation. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. I'm just, I'm just like blown away by this. It'll be really fun trying to see me put together a tutorial on how to use mods. I'll have to watch a couple of tutorials first. Pick one, not all. <laughs> oh, okay. Oops. 
not seeing any other. Oh, right click. Oh. Oh, mode single. Oh, geez. Like, I'm just now I'm just moving the node freehand all over the place. That is weird. Oops. Now I deleted it, I guess. What's nice, though, like, I mean, this this is definitely cool for, like, a lot of reasons. Um, but one of the cool things about City Skylines 2 compared to City Skylines 1 is that, like, move it is a lot less necessary than it seemed uh, to be in City Skylines 1. Like, I know people, like, because you can move a lot of buildings kind of freehand already, like, just by, like, turning off the snapping. But still, you can't get it exactly how you would want it. But, like, with Move It, you obviously can. So now I could, like, move this anywhere I wanted. But it still has, obviously, its limitations. Interesting. Okay, let's try to put, put this back. Because now it's, like, now I broke it. I broke it. Okay. It's got it's got a few kinks itself, but um, let's see. Let's I guess I'm just gonna delete it and try it again. Uh, cause now it won't connect back to the road with the. Oh, I guess I could probably run the water pipes underneath it myself. I don't know. Okay. Oh, we got the fires has the fire has spread over here now. All right, I guess I'm just gonna have to put some things in here because they're just all gonna whine about not having a police station and stuff for the 26 people who live there. Can't they just govern themselves a little bit for a while? And just like one, one nosy lady kind of keep everybody in check or something? Um, The 20 people living in this town are begging Pickle to add more things to the city. They really are. They're like, I hate it here. It's the desert. Everything is on fire. People are robbing me constantly. Another fire. We have no entertainment. We have nothing fun to do. You can go, like, uh, you know, off-roading or something. Make your own entertainment. Um, big thing for Move It was always, is always the roads. They've done much better with roads in the new game, but they, they gave additional problems when they added the functionality, like zoning. Oh, yeah. And I have one of those, too. I have, like, a zoning tool, too, which allows me to, like, take off some of the zoning. So I can just like click it and it'll get rid of zoning on a certain side. Oh, that's the, I left it on the default. Okay. So zoning on just the left side. But it looks like, so if you do, if you like zone it on a road that already has stuff on it and you try to switch the zoning, it looks like it won't undo zoning that's already been zoned up, which is nice. Because I think in... City Skylines 1, with, like, those new zoning upgrades that they eventually added, where you could um, select, like, one side or the other, if you got rid of the zoning on stuff that was already zoned and built, um, it would just, like, delete that stuff. They would they would be like, we don't have any zoning here, so we're going to abandon, and this building is going to be empty. So I like that, I like that the zoning tool doesn't do that, and that, like, all the zoning that you've already, that you've already made stays there. And I wonder, like, I, I definitely have to look more into Move It since I've never used it before. But one thing I'm really excited for with Move It is, like, you know, you'll probably hear, you'll probably get sick of hearing me say this at some point. But I love, I love Michigan Lefts. I'm obsessed with them. I just think they're the superior way of having turnarounds. People might be, people might disagree. But they're wrong. Michigan lefts are definitely the better way to do things. And I want to be able to have them, but without four different stop signs. And I think with Move It, like, that'll be easier. I mean, I might have made it left too much space out here, but...
I know there's a way to like combine nodes nicer. Ooh, not like that. That's definitely not it. But if I get them closer together, I think that can work. Biggest uses for it was always leveling and sloping as well as curves moving and cloning. Oh, yeah. Was no parallel road tool was like its own thing, wasn't it? Like I said, I never got into the mods um, in CS1. Not like that extensively. See. But I have seen, like, I, I watched obviously some of. I didn't watch extensively any of City Planner Plays' uh, CS1 stuff just because all of his series were like way old by the time I finally got into them and he used a lot more mods than I was using. Um, so like I've said, I ended up watching a lot of Overcharged Egg because he did a, a lot more vanilla stuff. Um, but I know that he, I know that CPP, I like I saw him use the Move It tool a lot for things like that. This is just wild. Like, I mean, that's ridiculous, but that's cool that I can do that. I'll mess around with it one day and I'll figure it out, but it's very cool. Uh, not no controller, but the one that made the loopy roads and nice slopes. Did I do this with the road? That what made this texture go weird, or was it just like that? Um, I'm trying to think what else, what else came with the DLC. I think that was it. Oh my god, we got another freaking fire here. I'm regretting turning on disasters. Um, that is just nuts. I hate these little icons though. Like, I just want like like one of them would be fine, but they just look so silly. I don't know. I don't like that. I wish it was just like everything was on fire instead. Um, okay, so now people have calmed down finally a little bit. Lack of entertainment. We got healthcare right here. Everybody chill out. Um, we have an abundance of leisure time, but nothing to do with it. So I wish we had like we don't even have any like beach themed like parks or something. There was no parks in this new pack. Like, I feel like they should have had, like, a marina or something. And I'm sure this shit will come in, like, Bridges and Ports, the full DLC, but come on. Like, they could have given us a park, something, like a beach dog park or something. But, I mean, they didn't even actually give us beaches, so I guess that's not really that surprising. Siri thinks I'm talking to her. Siri always thinks I'm talking to her. I'm never, I'm never talking to Siri. Oh, network multi-tool. Is that, that's, so was that move it or was that, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I know, I know that I'm pretty sure it was move it where like you could click like a bunch of nodes and then like have them all slope together, like evenly spread out. Um, Mostly because I always remember City Planner plays talking. I think it was, a, I think it's in his Nicolay, Nicolay Bay series because I watched that from the beginning for a little while anyway because I was like aware of his channel when that one started. Um, but I, I'm always laughing because like I saw a comment once about how he's like obsessed with having it under like a certain um, incline. And that is not like a very big incline at all. I think it was like 3% or something like that. And, um, I mean, I'm sure that's way more like how things are um, in, where, like, Wisconsin or something like that? In, like, the Midwest. Because, I mean, I know, like, in Michigan, we didn't have very steep roads basically anywhere. But, like, here, 3% uh, grade is nothing for some of the roads that we have here. And that's, like, you know, I'm not in San Francisco or anything, but um, we've got plenty of extremely steep roads. I think I drove my mom to the airport once from here. And she was, she's like afraid of heights. So <laughs> she was like scared going down a hill because like that's how steep it was. 
okay, so network multi-tool did it much nicer. I've and I, you know, I've seen people use them, but like I because I didn't use them myself, it wasn't like I was aware of like which ones they were using for which thing, you know, because they're using all of the little hotkeys and you know, it wasn't like they were explaining it every single step that they did. Um, you know, because I watched like, you know, Overcharged Eggs uh ILO series too, and he used, you know, full modded for that. And um, but like I don't know, I couldn't tell you which mods he was using at what time he was using them, you know what I mean? Yeah, six percent grades are dangerous for big trucks. Like the the road that I'm t that I was just talking about too. Like on the way to the airport, there's like a sign that says like no trucks, um, because it, it's it's super steep. They can't go down it or up it. I mean, I don't even think they would want to try. It's like it's really steep. Okay, um, I'm still bummed that we don't have. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like actually really pissed that we don't have any freaking parks from that pack either. Like, not one park. It's very lame. Because I feel like we definitely should have some sort of marina or something. And I just hate that they're going to put all that stuff be behind, like, a $50 paywall. Or at least $40. Like, I'm sure the full DLC, the Bridges and Ports, is going to be, like, $30 to $40. Easily. I mean, uh, $40 to $50 easily. I think at 5%, they are required to have runaway truck lanes. Interesting. I mean, that makes sense. Like, that totally makes sense. Um, I just always wonder how they find out, like, how do they how do they decide exactly what limitations things are going to have? Um, I guess that, the, the, that would be, like, an engineer's job, right? Something like that? To figure out, like, to test those kinds of things and come up with those, those parameters. It sounds like another thing that I'm going to spend, like, way too many hours looking up for no reason at all. To have just this completely useless knowledge in my brain. Um, but if I ever end up on like a TV trivia something or other, I'm I'm gonna have it in the bag. So maybe it'll pay off one dime. One one day. And another frickin' fire. I don't know what I'm doing up here. I'm just making some stuff. Um, you know what? I think, oops, that was not the right road. I wanted a uh, dirt road, not an alleyway. I think what I was going to, I had thought about this like an hour ago and I just now remembered. I was going to put like a radio tower or something up here. I mean, I don't really think I need this whole telecom tower, but like, why not? I have unlimited money. I can do whatever I want. Hmm. They, they didn't do it. They learned what happened and made changes. Yeah, experience. They learned the hard way that trucks can't uh can't go up certain inclines. Um So looking at this telecom tower, I just watched that I've watched it before, but like my wife was watching it last night again. I think it was last night anyway. That movie The Fall. Has anybody ever seen that movie? It's terrifying. Firefighting helicopters will solve those forest fires. Oh, I guess I could put one of those. Wait, do I have those? They don't come from here, do they? I would have to get, like, the proper fire station, right? I guess I can, like, you know, I don't need to be on just this one stupid road. I can make real roads over here. All right, let's put a real fire station down then. Oh, it's really big. Okay. Um, and then we'll add the helicopter depot, I guess. Helipad. That's a response unit. Is that the same thing or is that only for like... It's for class building, so I don't think we need that. Get rid of that one. We don't need that one then. Um, let's see. Or, you know, the fourth option is there's actually a helicopter dispatch on the regular. Oh, wait. Oh. Firefighting helicopter depot. Oh, there is. But that's more expensive, right? Oh, actually, it's not more expensive. What the heck?
All right, let's uh, let's switch it out. I haven't actually used this one uh, because I don't have disasters on in Pickleton, so I've never needed it. There we go. I think my dog might have just fallen down the stairs a little bit. It's all good. He's okay. I mean, I know I have unlimited money, but still. I think he just dropped his toy down the stairs. He's all good. He's fine. Okay. Um. Okay, what other mods do I have? I have... We've done this. This is... I love this map texture thing. This is super cool. And because I think you can just change it at any time. I could just put Mediterranean on here and it would just change it, right? Super cool. This is definitely like a must have mod for sure. Makes these things way better. This is this one. So, this theme, if and then if, if anybody missed the beginning, I was kind of going through a couple of these options. But like, I think this desert map theme is the one that like it came with this map. Oh, it does have this kind of rocky texture. I didn't think it did. Um, I like that, but I like the Rocky Sandy one better. I don't know. I just like the, the dirt texture, the dirt color better on this one. Any pinching gazillionaire? I mean, that's how people become gazillionaires, right? Not by blowing all their money. It's by being stingy. Hmm. Okay. What else? What else is our people complaining about? Unreliable healthcare coverage, but we have a clinic. Like, I don't understand. People are never happy with the clinic. Like it's it's basic healthcare for a small area. I don't know why nobody's ever happy with this thing. What did I place here? Large playground. Maintenance. Huh. I've never even noticed this. Oh, we got a level up over here. Is it going to change the look of it or no? No. So see, yeah, like I, like I was kind of saying earlier, they don't always change the look, I don't think. There's only three different level up variations but yeah i think i do want to even for my own sake just to get familiarize myself with all of the assets now that i've officially unlocked and started making use of the uh the dev tools i want to like do a asset overview of like all the stuff and like each individual one and see what they all look like at the different levels and blah 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 um for each like size you know like two by twos three by twos etc Hmm. I'm I'm so excited to see what other maps people come up with too. Um, CPP said one and a, or half, three fourths, and five were the three models. One to two, three and four and five. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought too. I think and hear me out. I feel like this is already going in a bad direction. We'll see. I'll hear you out though. I guess. But I think the clinic, crematorium, and even cemetery are all bugged. I never see patients or bodies in the storage or any of it. I mean, I, I do know that healthcare was, like, one of the very first, like, noticeable big bugs in the game. So, I mean, you could you could be right about that. It does say zero out of 100 patients. Um, and, I mean, it's not working at max efficiency, but, like, it doesn't matter because there's 41 people in here. Like, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. Which I guess we can start, like, zoning some more things up. Why don't we get a little bridge going over here or something? Turn off lights. Let's get these little guys down. You know, I'm also bummed. I mean, I guess it makes... I don't know. I mean, I could just be bummed and nitpicky about everything, but like... Only low density seems kind of lame. Uh, for the For the DLC. Like, I wish, like, I, you know, some row houses or, like, medium density kind of, like, apartment blocks or something would be really cool for, like, the, uh, like, a beachfront theme. Fancy little apartment complex or something. I 
mean, I guess that's fine. Um, okay. Do I have any commercial? Nope. I don't have anything. I was just, I was just living my best life here, zoning up residential. Um, completely forgetting that people need places to shop and work. Well, actually, they have plenty of places to work, that's for sure. Uh, between all of these buildings that are still, that are, like, not even close to being fully, fully staffed. Yeah, what, what wants extra, uh, educated people? Is that what it is? Or no, lack of labor. Lack of any kind of labor, which is fair, because I don't have any people here. I was too busy trying to make weird nodes with a, with a, with move it. There we go. Now there's more of a demand for things. Now that I placed a couple commercial buildings. You would, you know, you would think that I had never played this game, um, but it's just been so long since I've started a new city and had to, like, place the beginning infrastructure and everything. But I promise I know how to play. Well, that should help. That should definitely help. Um, what else do people need? I think I have all the basic stuff down. Garbage can just be exported. Uh, they don't need anything else right now. I think they're finally happy now. Oh, well, they don't have school. I guess they probably do want a school. I can put that over here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll put it down here somewhere. So grab an elementary school. Well, they're not really walking distance to it, but well, I guess I could put it right here. This is kind of a nice spot. A little flat area. Could be worse, I guess. Really excited to get more of these kinds of assets, too, eventually. But I know that'll be a while. I wonder how long they plan on, like, delaying the release of the other DLCs. Like, if they're going to release them closer together because it took so long for them to release the first one when it was way off schedule. <laughs> you say that, but your actions... I know. I know. It, 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 do, it would seem like I had never played this game until today, but... I swear. I swear I know how to play. But yeah, I wonder if they'll... I wonder if they'll release DLCs in, like, shorter time spans because they've already delayed kind of everything so much. Um, I mean, that would be nice, but, you know, I feel like that's probably not going to be the case. Um, but I think they, they, I think they've still said that they're, they want to be on track to like release the bridges and ports, which would be the final DLC for this expansion pass, uh, like at the end of the year, um, probably going to be like a Christmas thing or something. Um, I'm trying to think. I wish, I wish, I wish a lot of things, really. But I wish we had fences, just like in a, in a normal menu. Like, I wish they would just give us fencing. Um, I know we have it in the dev mode, and eventually I'm sure they'll bring find it to, uh, or find stuff, find it, find stuff, whatever they want to call it. Whoever made that mod, I forget. Uh, I'm sure they'll bring it in. For the Paradox mods eventually, but um, I'm missing my fences. I was really starting to enjoy having those. Hello, Greg. Welcome in. Glad you could make it. And yes, yes, I'm still streaming. How was, uh, is Joy already done? How was Joy's stream? I, I wish I would have, uh, I wish I had known that she was going to be streaming. I would have wanted to join it too, but I already had this one set up. Um, because I think, I don't think, like, if I want to get, let's see, props probably, right? 
Um, uh, road decorations, decorations, industrial. I assume it's in industrial somewhere that has the fences. I guess I can just search fence, can't I? Not fence, fence. Nope, not working. Uh, oh, crap. that flag fence. Hmm. I know they have them though, because I'm pretty sure everything that was in find it or find stuff is in the dev menu somewhere. Yep, she's done. Well, I hope she had a good stream. Was it was it enjoyable? Was it joyful? Let me close this because that's driving me crazy. Um, lack of high skill labor, lack of labor, lack of high skill labor, all kinds of problems going on here. Well, if they weren't complaining about having all these things that they don't need for a town of 69 people. Um, but okay, fine. I'll give them some more people. Not that I don't want I do not want it growing over the water. That is gonna look terrible. Okay, we'll fix that. It's fun having the new radio stuff on here too. Like I downloaded that mod, and so now I have some of City Planner Plays radio on. I like the new I like the new station, the deluxe relax or whatever, but I wish it wasn't the one that had that stupid man always interrupting you to tell you things that are wrong with your city that are not wrong with your city. She trumped me because she's doing CS1. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she does amazing stuff with CS1. So I don't blame you. Like I said, if I had known that she was also going to be streaming at that same time, I would have I would have just watched that instead myself. Um, but I already had this plan and I didn't know that. So. Um, but I'll, I'll catch her next one. Um, let's see. Yeah, the ads, yuck. Oh, like ads on this channel? Is he mansplaining your city to you? Yes, what's his name? J. Thomas Hornbuckle, whatever his name is. He's always saying that, like, there's power outages and things going on, but there never is. I've never purchased any of the radio station DLC. I just turned the radio off and listened to Spotify or have YouTube running. Yeah. I like uh you know we've talked a couple times in the in the discord. I get like I just get distracted and don't even think about putting on different sound, like different music. And I end up just like playing I just listen to whatever's on it in here. And then um and like when I'm playing by myself, I, it's like easy to filter out, but when I'm talking and stuff, I'm like it's like the most annoying thing in the world to hear him interrupt. She's streaming tomorrow? Cool. Um hopefully I'll be I should be able to should be able to check it in. Uh, tune into that at some point tomorrow. Dep I guess depending on what time I'll have to look. But um, but very cool. Yeah, it's just like when he, I'm like, it's always, it's always too like right when I'm in the uh, like right when I'm in the middle of the most annoying or like specific thing that needs my focus and attention, and then he like interrupts, and I'm like, oh my god, shut up. It was, it was uh, enjoyable the first. 10 times maybe uh now now it's gotten a little bit old i'm sure they'll give him more things to say eventually but uh for now i'm like okay we're done with you now we're done so i wish the new i wish the new station uh which just came as part of like you know the instant download for the ultimate edition i think i, I think you have to pay for it which I, I'm it's cheaper than ten dollars but it's still not worth paying for i, I never bought any of the radio station dlcs for or City Skylines 1 either. Um, not unless they like came in a pack or something together, but I wish it I wish it didn't have the interruptions. Because I feel like I would like to just listen to it. Um, because the the it's not bad. It's not my favorite either way, still. Like I think the I think the smooth beat? The smooth beat? My favorite one? 
of like the regular stations that it comes with. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what other. Oh, Pluff the Growables. We can try to take a look at that, I think. Um, I don't actually even know how to access that. Oh, you know what? It's just, it's using the dev mode. That's what it is. So, Plop the Growables is basically just that, like, um, if a, if a building isn't in, like, a, a painted zoned area, it'll, it won't immediately abandon. I think that's all that the Plop the Growables does, is let, is let this happen. So, like, even though there's no actual zoning tile underneath here, like, no zoning type, it allows it to still function, like be placed here. I usually don't even have headphones on and can't hear the radio stations. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think a lot of people play like I know that I've played um, like CS1 without headphones, like without headphones on and without listening to the sound. And sometimes, especially when I'm just like. Testing stuff when I'm playing, um, I don't. There's no need for the headphones. Like, I don't need to know what's... I don't need to hear anything. Um, obviously, when I'm, like, recording it, I need to make sure that, like, I'm not talking over the guy on the radio um, by accident. And, like... Oh, because that would be so annoying to listen to. Like, as a viewer. Like, somebody who didn't know that the radio ad was playing and, like, the streamer's just talking over that. That would drive me crazy. Listen to. Like I, there was like a an episode recently, I think either either it hasn't come out yet or, or it already did I forget. But like there was I was right in the middle of something and I like couldn't turn him off, and I was like I am annoying myself talking over him right now. I got to turn this off. But like I was right in the middle of explaining something. I was about to totally lose my track if I stopped. Oh, what radio? I don't. I wonder why nobody can hear anything. I mean, it is. Maybe it's just because it's like, maybe it's just super low. It could be super low, I guess. But me, it sounds like it's loud, but it's right in my ears. So when I play Listen to the SimCity 4 soundtrack, I think I think somebody made um, a mod for of the SimCity 4 radio in City Skylines 2. I know you can't play City Skylines 2, Greg. Sorry, bud. But um, for anybody else listening and watching... I think there is one of the custom stations that you can download is um, from the, or maybe it was SimCity 3000. I'm not sure. It was one of the old ones. Did you forget to share your audio when you set up the stream? It's like, on my end, it shows that it's playing. It says desktop audio. And my mic audio is working. So, I don't know. Has, like, has that always been the problem? Like for other streams, have you never been able to hear music the whole time? I've never, I never thought to ask. To be fair, I just assumed people could hear it because it's a uh, because it, it always shows up on my end. Like I can see the bars moving, um, as as they would be expected to be moving. So like OBS is picking up the sound. Um, but that's weird. I don't know. Feels like I'm in the office with someone using Zoom, but they forgot to turn on the audio share. <laughs> to be on my end, it looks like it's working. So I don't know. I'd have to poke around with it a little bit more to figure that out because. Uh, yeah, it seems it's on my end, it shows that it's here. I've, I've heard the ads before, but not on streams. Huh. That is so weird. I think this is the first time I... Well, then you can't comment if this is the first time you've seen it. Somebody else has been here before. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's just the music from the game. I'm not playing anything special. Um, I mean, obviously, I have to be careful, like, what I put on there. uh, For, you know, monetization purposes and whatnot and copyright stuff. But, so yeah. Yeah, it must be, it must be a YouTube setting then, I guess. Because I know I, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was helping Pilot Build City set up his stream because uh, he was running into some issues with his like new computer that he got. Um, 
is trying to like set up the settings on a new system. And we were going back and forth because like I would hear some things sometimes and not another time. And I don't know what he ended up doing to fix it, but um this is the first time okay, so this is the first time you've not heard the game audio during a stream. Okay, cool. So it's not I didn't do anything different this time. It's just not working today, I guess. It's probably like one of my settings somehow with like connecting YouTube to OBS. I don't know. But it's not the most exciting music anyway, regardless. And nobody wants to just hear the hanging and the drawing of road sounds anyway. Although I remember like going back into City Skylines 1. Um, this is like the most exciting stream ever. I'm just sitting here staring at my city talking. Um, but like the City Skylines 1 noises when you're drawing the roads is so much more annoying now that I that that they're not like that in this game. They're much quieter. Because, like, in City Skylines 1, all of this would be just making a ton of noise doing this. Drawing roads out over and over and just, like, that weird clicking sound that it would make when you would draw out roads. So I'm glad it doesn't do that. Hmm. I kind of like the music. I just get tired of the ads. Yeah. I know squat about YouTube streams. I've only ever streamed on Twitch. See, I'm like I'm like the exact op opposite. I think somebody asked me whether or not I ever did any streaming on Twitch or if I would. And I'm like, I'm not like opposed to it or anything. I've just never used it. So and I know that now you can do both at the same time. So that's kind of nice. Um, you can like multi stream, which I know like the last time I had, you know, one time a long time ago. And like, oh, I should stream on on Twitch. That'll be fun. And um, I just didn't have any of the like equipment to do it, so it I never ended up happening. But I watched a lot of other people do it for a while. And um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, I I mean, you couldn't multi-stream, and there were like limitations on like when you were allowed to post a vod on any other website. Like there had to be like a certain amount of time in between. And it was kind of weird. But now they let you do both. So that's kind of cool. Because I know, I know CPP does both. Um, like multi-streams when on the days that he streams, which I think are Thursdays. It's always like right when I have something to do on Thursdays. So I'm never able to watch it. But, but yeah, the ads, the ads do get a very annoying very fast. Every time I open up this park menu, I get annoyed all over again that we don't have any new parks with this pack. I mean, I know it's like an asset pack. And I'm like being one of those people that I was like complaining about earlier in the week, complaining that it's not a full expansion pack or something. But not even, not just, not even one park, nothing. Seems a little bit lame. But I get it. I guess we're just going to have to get like, I guess we're just really going to have to get used to the idea that packs are going to be more frequent and they're going to have less stuff in them and they're just going to be expensive. I still think $10 is like way too much. That's insane. Like, I, I can't believe that that's what they're going to charge for these things, for these asset packs. And like the region pack. So like the region pack that they, was that going to be free or is that also paid? Hey Bert. Hey Bert, where's Ernie? Um, how often do you get that jerk joke? <laughs> I can't hear you. I have a banana in my ear. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, every time I see your name, Bert, I think about um I mean, not Bert and Ernie. That is not usually my first thought. My first thought is my my dad's name is Albert and he hates the nickname Bert. Nothing against Bert, he just doesn't like it. I don't know. I don't know why he feels so strongly about it, but he really doesn't like Bert as a nickname. Hmm. My mom also cannot hear the music, so I don't know what I did. She knows she knows all about the story. She knows why my dad doesn't like Bert as a nickname. I don't know why. Um,
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is with the music, but we won't worry about it for today. Bert has a sense of humor. <laughs> All right, what else should we put in the city to start? I'm trying to think of like, I've looked at, I think we've taken a look at all the mods that I have available to us. We did the theme, the texture replacer. Oh, you know what? I also have the advanced, well, I thought I did anyway, but I know sometimes there have been issues where like certain mods don't always load every single time. Um, Like even when I started up, when I originally, like, when I was setting up the stream and, like, testing and making sure that things were set up and I thought, you know, my sound and everything was working. Um, the, originally, the map wasn't... I have the map. Don't, I had already had the map downloaded and, and installed, but when I opened the game the first time, it wasn't in my custom maps, so I had to start all over again. We need an Eiffel Tower. We can do that. Um, so I know that sometimes... Wait, do we not have an Eiffel Tower? We don't even have one. I thought we actually had that. We have a Ferris wheel. Um, I thought we actually did have an Eiffel Tower. Shows you, shows you how much I know about this game, I guess. Um, so but I'm, I should have... We do have the extended road tools. I did find out that I have that. So but I, that one works. But I mm, probably not on dirt roads, I guess. Here it does. Cool. I like that. Um, but I also did the water features one. Oh, no, it's here. So I have early, this one is the extended or extra landscaping tools. I can paint resources. Um, which I, I might do in Pickleton just a little bit. Just to make up for the fact that I built a golf course on top of all of my farms. Okay, but that's pretty cool. Um... Where, where would the, oh, no, this is the groundwater source. I did, I did get the water features one, I think. I thought I did anyway, but uh, I don't know where that would be. Yeah, CS1 had an Eiffel Tower, um, because they had that, like, whole, well, I guess this is the landmarks, this is landmarks too, but, like, they had that whole landmarks, um, I think it was part of, like, the deluxe edition or something like that, and, um, which I think is like the same deal here. It was part of like a pre-order thing and then you could you could buy it later. Like way, way later they released it to like everybody to buy. Um, because I still had it and I didn't buy City Skylines one until like 2020. So um what else do we we have this one is like something from Finland, I think. Just like the and you know, it makes me think of the thing from Seattle. Um should be in landscaping. Is that not here? Is that not what this is? Uh, change tree age. Like in here? Like this is just water stuff. Ooh, so you right, so you left click it to place it and right click it to get rid of it. That's super cool, super simple. Um, bulldozing. Ooh, what's this? Vehicles and Sims. Um. Disables the prompts. For removing standalone lanes, such as interconnected fences, interconnected hedges, linear street markings, vehicle and pedestrian lanes, trying to target those inside networks will remove the network. You cannot create these in-game without a mod for it. Ooh, so does this, like... Does this mean I can get, like... I can delete... Like, part of this bushes or something like that? I don't know. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Like I see these I see these lines up here, but I can't actually do anything with it. Ooh. Oh, I didn't have anarchy on, but like all of these went on top of the rocks. So that's kind of weird. Uh, but I guess because like, they were probably placed with anarchy on. Or like mods on. More fires. Okay. Uh, sh oh, shows and exclusively targets static object markers or invisible networks. Oh, okay. So I have to have both of these on. 
Uh, but it still doesn't, still not actually doing anything. Hmm. I have to have, oh, you can't have both of these things on. Interesting. What is this? For removing invisible parking decals, various spots, points, and spawners. Um, so that just deletes the whole building. That's not what I want. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to play around with this one more, but this sounds very intriguing. Um, what does this do? Oh. Cool. Uh, oh, Anarchy. Anarchy's on. Removing spaces, including walking, parking, and hangout areas. Interesting. I'm just having a blast here. Okay, can I make this normal again, though? Let's, let's turn this, whoopsies, back to normal. Get rid of that. What is this, a fire station or a police station? Uh, okay, let's put that back. Very cool. Um... Should be in land at that's AC, ATC tower. The that the unique building I had. I just uh, I'm I'm lost here. Landscaping to you know it's probably really just the fact that like the mod isn't in here. Um, like maybe it just didn't load up properly because that is that is a problem. Ooh, you can snap to the middle of the road. Is that like a new update or is that like a mod? Looks like it's this it's a creation tool. Because that's actually really annoying when I'm trying to make districts. Um, I wonder if that's new. Anyway, it's probably just the fact that like the mod isn't actually in the game. Like I probably, it probably just didn't load up properly. Um, so as far as I know, you should be able to have access to it like during regular gameplay. It's not just for editing maps to have those extra water features. Um I think Lee has played around with them. The water stuff. Um I don't know if anybody else has messed with it yet. Um outside of map building at least. Yeah, cuz it's not it's just not in any of the places where you would expect it to be. Um Bummer. Um, let's see. How are, we, how are we doing anyway? People are finally happy. They have spacious homes, reliable mail service. They've got all the... Well, how do they have reliable mail service? I don't even have any mail places. I guess they're probably getting that from, like, outside? Outside sources, I guess? Although I gotta say, as far as mail goes, I do really like the post office. I think it's a nice asset. The one in City Skylines uh, 1, I feel like, was a bit nicer, but I still like, I like it a lot. And yeah, we can give them one of those, too. A couple mailboxes, why not? I don't think you would really realistically find mailboxes on dirt roads, but we can make our own rules here. Fine. Um, I have the river slowly approaching my city. I expect it to be there rather soon. So where do you find... um? Where do you find those tools? Because I should have the mod on here, but I'm thinking it didn't load. Um, looking at PDX mods right now, see where I can find where it's supposed to be. The tool is accessed in the landscaping menu with a tab with a water drop and icons for different water sources. Uh, that's from the mod description. Yeah, because, okay, so it's probably just that it's not in here, because I think I should, I can still open this, and it won't, like, mess anything up, and we can look at it. Um, Because I have it in here, I'm sure I do. I've, I I downloaded a couple more mods just to mess around with today on, on, on the stream. Um, You know what? Maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't do the water ones. I'm over here talking shit, and I didn't even do it. Nope. I guess I left that one out. It's just the uh it's just the extra landscaping tools that I have. Cause code mods. Yep, water features. I don't have it. Nope, oh, that's my bad. Okay. Here I am like 
losing my mind about it, and I just didn't even do it. I swear, you guys, I have played this game before. Um, okay. Do I have... No, I don't have the... I don't have the 589 tiles mod either. But, um... I wonder... So, I know that this is, like, not real. Like, it's, a, like, a generated... Well, what... what I guess I haven't really made a map. So do may do people when they create maps make all of this stuff too? Or like how does that work? They have to make the whole map and then we still get just this little portion. I mean, it's not little. It's like a pretty big spot. It's a pretty big portion, but still. They have to make the entire area. Yep, problem solved. User error. It's always user error. Um I feel like that's kind of an I mean It'd be weird if they just made like this the smaller inside portion realistically like you want to make the whole map but um so it looks you know so it can look realistic from like the outside perspective and it's not just all of a sudden cut off or something but um the heck um messing with it now okay uh but yeah i want to i do want to try to i do want to try to create a map but i'm i'm not I'm not a map maker by any means. Um, but I'm really excited to see what people come up with. Because, like, what they've already done is still just, is just incredible. Well, in CS1, we usually use type maps. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's fair. Like, you're not actually, like, by hand creating the whole map. You, like, import the height map and it does it for you, right? Kind of. And then you just, then you fill in the rest. I guess that's fair. That makes a lot more sense. Because, like, I was wondering, you know, like, looking at, like, these kinds of things up here, because, you know, I've worked with the terraforming tools before, obviously, and uh, they're, you know, annoying. Um, they're difficult, like, to make, to look nice by just, like, doing this, you know, by doing it yourself. I feel like that would be really difficult to do a whole map like that. And it's possible, but like, I just feel like that would be like so much time. These textures are cool. I'm liking this a lot. I kept, I was trying to like, um, in Pickleton, was trying to build like a cliffside and it just, it just looked so silly, um, which is a bummer, but like with textures like this, it would look way better. Um, I joined late, which map is this? So this is one of the custom maps, um, the Black Dragon Canyon, Utah map. So I forget, um, the, oh, I guess I can open it and you can actually see. So it's in the Paradox Mods and we'll just go into my library because I have it here. Go to maps. Um, Black Dragon Canyon, Utah. By Rafterman NZ. I assume that's probably like New Zealand. Um, but yeah, so this is like, it's even, I just yesterday, I think, or two days ago, it was only at like 12,000 subscribers. Now we're at, now it's at 17,000. So it's a pretty good map. Like, I, I, that's awesome. Kudos to them. They made a killer map. And welcome in, JLA. <laughs> no worries, jump jumping in late. We're happy to have you in. Uh, you didn't really. I mean, I, I, this is all I've built. I've just been kind of rambling and talking about nonsense for a while now. Um, but we have a little city going here. Just some fun stuff. Uh, the necessities, some water, blah blah blah, and that's about it. We've just been kind of checking out the map, checking out some of the new assets from the beach property stuff. Um, I haven't actually. Until today, this is like the first time I've touched the uh, the North American themed beach stuff. I've I've only used the European stuff so far. Um, oh, I forgot to take a look at the. Uh, I had a question about those subscribers. Do they include only CS two? Do you mean for um, like for the for the mods on the for the for the map, like in the paradox mods, or do you mean my subscribers? This, I think, this has to only be CS2, because it's, I don't, there's not, I don't think it works for CS1. Um, as far as mine, I don't know. 
Yeah. Um, I forgot to, I don't know if that guy is still in here who was talking about the DLC and how they're not going to buy it. Um, which I don't, again, don't blame them. Ryan. I forgot to look at the, uh, mods and map subs. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that would only include CS2 because CS, CS1 uses mods through, uh, through the Steam workshop. And so this is, uh, the Paradox mods are only, are only for CS2. Not sure if there's some overlay with the Steam Workshop. Um, well, as far as I as far as I know, there's no there's no accessibility for mods for CS2 through the Steam Workshop. It's only through Paradox mods. Um, and I, I I think the Thunderstore still works if which is what most people had been using. If you're not super familiar with the modding scene, um, Thunderstore is just like another app uh, similar to Paradox mods, except for it's external. This is Paradox Mods is within City Skylines to itself and, like, directly integrated into it. Um, I think, as far as I understand, like, you could still use Thunderstorm Mods, but I don't know that you can use them both together. Um, and obviously people are going to, you know, steer away from the Thunderstorm as Paradox Mods is available now. Um, so I don't think you can use them together, but... Uh, as far as I know, those are the only two ways that people have been able to mod City Skylines 2, and there won't ever be mod support through the Steam Workshop. Which I know is, like, a huge disappointment for a lot of people. Um, I've, I, like, you know, I've, I've mentioned a couple times, but if you're new here, I've never, I never really got into mods in CS1, uh, just because I joined kind of late to playing it in general. So... I never really, I never ended up using them extensively. I only used like a couple quality of life mods um, in City Skylines 1. So I'm not super familiar with the Steam Workshop, but I know people are very disappointed to not be able to have it for City Skylines 2. Um, I don't know if Ryan is still here, who was interested in a, <clears throat> in a little overview of some of the Beach Properties assets. Um, though I do hope to eventually do a video on it as well if anything for my own personal uh reference to be able to go back to and look at something quickly um but here's some of the uh the he's here's all the signature buildings for the european theme of the new beach assets dlc um i'm trying to figure if we can get a good idea of number of cs2 users at any one time by looking at the most popular mod like anarchy or move it um Okay, let's uh let's check them out. So I think if we just go to browse and we'll just go to code mods to keep things simple and we'll go to most subscribed. So the some of these some of these mods are obviously dependency mods, so <clears throat> anytime you download one mod, it's going to like a specific mod that might use that dependency mod, it's automatically going to download both of them. Um I mean it doesn't you can say no, but that would be stupid because they need each other. But um, so the Unified Icon li Library has 84,000. Ooh, subscribers, it looks like for this one. Um, and this is this is just this is one of those dependency mods so that the icons match what's already in the game and kind of connect and, and work together, basically. Um, I don't think it does anything other than that. But then Move It was the next most popular one. Um, <clears throat> and Anarchy. And those both have... So they have... Move It has 74,000. Anarchy has 64. So... I, I guess that could be... That's like a pretty good gauge of like how many people are actively playing. Like I guess... Um, it's hard to see. I, I think I think on Steam it shows like active players like currently playing the game or something like you can see in the well, how many people played in the last hour and stuff like that but i would definitely say that a good a solid 50,000 people because that seems to be like the the biggest the most uh reoccurring number of subscribers to a mod like 84 is an outlier like that's a much larger number but we have a lot of numbers in the 50,000 range so um we got four different mods in the 50,000 range and 
uh, just a couple in the 40s. So I would say roughly somewhere in the 50,000s is what people is like the kind of n- the number of people that are still actively playing City Skylines 2 um, consistently, or at least enough to have downloaded mods for it. I feel like, I, and I know a lot of people probably gave up on the game a little bit. Um, and so I, I know that mods brought a lot of people back. So things are, I'm sure, going to fluctuate between like, you know, how much people are, or how, much, how many people are playing right now. But um, I think the addition of the mods and the DLC and just like the general excitement of new stuff has definitely brought a lot of people back. <clears throat> I know uh, Lee, for example, I don't know if he's still in here or not, um, but in the Discord, I'm kind of given up on City Skylines for a little bit there um, with a lot of bugs and stuff that were going on, rightfully so. And um, once once people started really getting into the Thunderstore app, um, and really using those mods, I know that that brought him back into the game, and um, he's he's enjoying it now, a lot more. Um, yeah, the Thunderstore. I had to. I eventually had to give in and just and just get it. I was trying to keep things vanilla and trying to keep the game like base game as much as possible. Um, but it just it just got to be to the point where th- there were just too many things that that weren't available that I that I really really wanted and needed. Most of the stuff to do with like decorations, I I at least for like you know the my first city and and still getting used to the game and playing it, I wanted to play it, you know as much to how it's supposed to be played as possible. I mean there's no supposed to be played. There's no right or wrong way to play the game, but I wanted to get used to the mechanics as they are designed before I started modding them and trying to mess around with stuff. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got like a <clears throat> weird tickle in my throat. I can't get rid of. Um, but so I was trying to stay away from mods for as long as possible, but with decorations and stuff and just trying to make my city look, you know, a little bit unique and a little bit more interesting, the mods just became essential. Um, I am not sure that I'm saying this correctly, but Tobakin, uh, so I do think the asset editor is what really is going to bring people, many people into the game. Yeah. I think for sure, because I know, I know, I know I'm super excited for like the region pack that they um, teased a while ago. And I I want to say they said it was going to be like a free download. Um, I can't remember now, though. So don't and don't quote me about that. I just I, I thought that's what they said. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, Just because. I mean, it's it's a base game. So like, of course, the asset pool is going to be pretty limited, but. I'm really excited for more assets because I've pretty much run through the gamut here of uh, of available assets. E- even these, you know, there's only so many. I, they say there's 60, but like there's it's not really quite like that uh, just because it's really just different variations, a lot of different variations of the same kind of structure, um, just in different colors and things like that. Um. Yeah, so so I, I I agree too. I think when when assets come out, people are gonna go nuts on this game because, um, you know I, I know that like in City Skylines one, the in- incredible stuff that people were able to make, like the crazy realistic stuff. Like somebody was in my Discord sharing, um, they they made a city, um, based on Bangkok. I want to say they said, and they they shared some crazy pictures of like you know, of the inspiration, like, this is the area that I created, and, like, here it is in City Skylines 1, and, like, for a second, I genuinely couldn't tell which one was which. I was like, that looks so realistic. I thought the City Skylines 1 picture was the real-life picture. So, um, so I I know that, like, the crazy stuff that people, the crazy realistic stuff that people could do in City Skylines 1 was already insane, and there's already so many aspects of City Skylines 2 that already look a lot more that bring a lot more realism to the game than than City Skylines 1 base game had. Like, there's no, you know, silly little donut cars and, like, the octopus on the buildings and things like that. So our assets, like, the assets in City Skylines 2 are already a lot more uh, realistic looking. So when people can make assets themselves, uh, I think it's just going to be, it's going to be game-changing, literally, 100%. Um... The region pack is 2,500 buildings in total. Dang, that's a lot. 
So that's super cool. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for that. I've hit 20k population and I'm struggling to think what I should build next. Everything you do build at this point is just more of the same. Yeah. Um, 30% more is playing CS2 now after the new update. Okay, so I knew there was a way to see like who's actively playing. Maybe more. Um, 20k is around where I get bored too. Yeah, I think um, I think Pickleton now is at about 50,000 as of the last episode. And that includes, I've finally gone through um, and upgraded, kind of like upzoned a little bit of our, the very, very first build that we did in the city, like the very first starting neighborhood. Um, I've finally gone through and upzoned it a little bit and dealt with a little bit of the high rent stuff and increased density there. So I know that had a part of the, uh, that, you know, that accounts for part of the population spike since the last regular episode before the beach properties one. Um, but it was getting to be a little bit of a struggle there, you know, trying to come up with unique ideas and things to build in a city that was, I, I had used already so many of the assets, um, at least assets that I needed and actively could use that weren't just, you know, decorative buildings or like the park assets and, and all the landmarks and things. Like I've placed most of the relevant um, service buildings and stuff. Like there's like technical universities and th there's a couple of university stuff that I haven't placed yet that I have plans to do. But like if I was playing this game consistently and not, you know, limiting myself to like a video a week, I would have burned through all of this stuff a long time ago. Bye, Greg. Thank you for stopping in. Happy, happy you joined us for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> peak players are 7,800 now versus 5,400 before. Oh, it was over nine. It was over 9,000 today. So that's a lot. I mean, it is, it's a Saturday, so probably a lot more people than during the week, I would imagine. Um, I know here in California, Southern California, it's raining and it's been raining all day. So any Southern Californians are definitely inside playing video games. <laughs> um, that overlay, uh, the overlay, I hate it. Legacy flavor, please come to the mods. Yeah, that's another one. You know what? I was wondering which one it was. I was like, there's another mod that I was missing. Find stuff and the legacy flavor one are like essential because yeah the overlay is just too much i hate the like i've gotten so used to not having the gray um like these opaque squares <laughs> from when i had uh when i had legacy flavor through the thunderstorm mod press the i key and escape to get rid of the overlay the the blue one like this thing i press i and nothing happens I, if i press escape it goes away oh perfect Okay, so it does. There is a way to get rid of it now. Because hmm, the I button wasn't working for me anymore. But if you press escape, it works. Does it work with everything? Cool. Oh, but no, but now I can't see actual water sources. But I'm not really sure that I could do that before anyway. What mod is it to replace roads and build keys? Um, that is the extended road upgrade tool. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Let me hop in here again and see. I like that it's so much smoother and faster now than it was like that, that first day. I, it was just wasn't even worth trying that first day. Um, let's see. Extended road upgrades. Yeah. So that's the one that does where you can just easily switch between keys, tunnels, and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh... Another essential one in my book, um, as far as like, especially for the keys, like it's just, they're just so hard to make otherwise. Okay, so I can get rid of the, no, see, pressing escape now get, gets rid of that whole menu and I don't even have the tool open anymore. Oh, no, now I just messed it up last time. User error again. Okay, so it does work. Um, What's well, a retaining wall on a dirt road? So I don't, just don't really think that there's much... There's much to do there. What if, what if I put it over here? I guess I would need actual, like, land next to it. What if I... Okay. Put this up a little bit. And then... Try it out. Ooh, and it's nice and flat, too. Well, I guess it probably has, like, a maximum height. But it's no longer all, like, jiggly. 
Um, I know there was like a problem where like if this was like not perfectly flat or something, it would be weird. And you would see all the crazy bumps and stuff. I guess it still does that a little bit, but I feel like it's better than it. I feel like it's better than it was before, like a lot smoother. Because I know I didn't use a, I didn't use a lot of retaining walls, but I know that it would like it would be very bumpy, the retaining walls before. <clears throat> oh, you know what? I think it just came out. I think it just released today on Paradox Mods, the uh, the extended road upgrade tool. I think I was on it was either like a Facebook group post or it had to have been because I don't really get on Reddit very much. But um, I have a lot of groups on Facebook and I think somebody was talking about it and that it like it literally just dropped today on there. So. That's exciting. So if you've been waiting for it, the extended road upgrades tool is out now. Um, Kodiak the Kodiak told me about this. Oh, the oh the um about the up or about the overlay thing, temporary. Because we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, about how the I button was like not working anymore since the latest update, but the escape that works. So that's good. There is a way to do it, which is nice because that was really annoying, actually, to like have to like exit out physically and like all the way I'm gonna go all the way up to the button, you know. Especially like when I've got all this stuff in front of my face and stuff, it's so annoying to have to like press all these different buttons. Especially like I'm so used to like now muscle memory hitting a certain button at a certain time. Um, but yeah, I thought uh, I'd been waiting on it for ages. Yeah, but no. So, Lee, uh, it just came out today. So, <clears throat> extended upgrades and tree line tool are a must for the must for the console. Like they can't have code mods. They can't ship the game without it to console player. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think things like um and it's 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 like annoying and difficult because I've been saying this for like a long time that I'm pretty sure they will uh have the Oh, okay, so if you go and you press escape immediately, it closes out the whole thing. If you hit I first and then escape, it lets you keep the tool. Okay, slightly annoying, but it's fine. Um, I lost my train of thought there again. Oh, for like for the console players and with like the extended road upgrade thing, especially for the keys. And I've been saying this basically since forever. Um, but that they're waiting for the uh. The Bridges and Ports DLC to, oh gosh, that's so weird because you can't see it on the other side. That's so funny. It's like invisible, but on here it's not weird. Um, that we'll get like official key functionality um, when, when the Bridges and Ports DLC comes out. Like that'll be part of that DLC. We'll be making keys easily. Since technically everything that we're building that are quote unquote keys are not keys. Uh, they're just, they're not supposed to function that way. We, we've been using them that way and we've been like making it work, but it was never designed with that purpose in mind, if that makes sense. And we've all just been like rigging the game to do what we wanted it to. Um, I'm trying to get rid of that, but there we go. Um, and I think I want to say somebody had asked in like one of the Q and A posts or something with, um, with Colossal Order about keys and stuff like that, and they were like, "Oh, that sounds like a great addition for the Bridges and Ports DLC." You'll have to wait and see. And I'm like, that just irritates me because it, it's another thing behind a paywall, and un unless they intend to like also make that a free update, like I know they. They do do free updates with DLCs sometimes, or at least they, they used to more so with CS1. Obviously, we don't have like a whole lot of, you know, info to go off of for CS2 since we've only had this one DLC. But I, I kind of always had the impression that they were definitely going to make that part of that DLC. And then that Q&A post, I was like, you know, that basically confirmed it. They basically just came out and said, like, it'll be part of that DLC. And... I think I just find that really disappointing if it's going to be stuck behind a payroll, a paywall, uh, just because it's it's such a it's such a necessary function. And like, obviously, everybody wants it. And I, I said this in a stream a while back. I was so irritated once when they 
like showcased a a person's a person's build and they were like look at what this person did with the keys and i'm like they don't have keys like that's you're like showing off a gate a function of the game that like isn't what it is that's they're not keys we just had to like rig this game and the painstaking you know process to make keys as we make them now without mods is so annoying and they were like showcasing it as like look at all the fun things that you can do and it's like I, I would love to be able to do that easily and I would like you to stop showing it off as like a thing that can be done when it's when it used to be so difficult like now with the mods it's it's easy but like if you were playing base game no mods building keys is so annoying <clears throat> So we have to, yeah, so we have to buy official keys. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. And like I said, they, you know, they could make that a free update, but I suspect that that won't be the case. <clears throat> I did say they will get free content with DLC releases. I just think that each properties was kind of the expect expectation since they have their hands so full. Oh, the exception. Okay. Um, And they need enough content for this DLC, which is kind of too little for, for many. Yeah. I mean, that that's fair, too. Like, I think they were probably they were feeling pretty pressured to put something out to give us something new. Um, And like. So with with mods being in that beta stage, they were like, OK, we'll, we'll give them this DLC. Hi, Vanilla Skylines. Welcome in. I'm still just rambling away over here. This is like the longest. I think this is like the longest stream I've had. But we're just having a good old chat about uh, about City Skylines, too, about all the stuff in it. And what it's missing basically <laughs> um so and as uh do you i know it says vanilla skylines so do you only play vanilla um or is that more for like city skylines one i don't know um but yeah so i know i think i think essentially i guess with the beach properties assets dlc the free content that they gave us was um was the mods, I guess, right? Oh well, thank you for joining in and saying hello. I'm a I'm a lurker myself too, so no hard feelings about that. I'm very shy when it comes to other people's things. I'm just like I'm just here chilling. Don't mind me. Oh, you play console? Okay, so cool, cool. I wasn't because I'd seen your stuff, but I wasn't sure. Um, I would I hadn't paid it. Oh yeah, because I remember you talking about it in a Discord thing. Um, with um with Jazz. She also plays co mostly consoles. She plays these guys too, on, on PC, obviously. But um, okay, so now I'm 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 on it now. I know what we're, I know where we're at. Um, but yeah, so well, that's kind of what we're talking about a little bit too. Just like the what stuff is going to be missing for console players, and like what things really should be included in the base game stuff for console players. Um. I, I know I know it sounds ridiculous that the free content was PDX mods since that's, you know, not something that they're actually providing. It's something that hard working players are putting their blood, sweat, and tears into instead for free. But um that's just kind of the way that that's kind of the way that works, I think, now. They're like, yeah, this is this is your free stuff. Enjoy. Even though they did, you know, nothing for it. I mean, they had to make the Paradox mods like platform. I get it. Like I'm sure that there was a lot of you know, nonsense going into making that happen. Um, ugh, more fires, but still. Um, so I noticed you've not crashed yet. I'm crashing to desktop every 20 minutes using PDX, mostly the same, using mostly the same thunderstorm mods I was using before. Um, I don't know if, um, you know, I've actually had very, very few crashes throughout the entirety of my playtime on, City Skylines 2. I went, I crashed one time during a live stream, um, but I was building a very dense downtown, so I'm not really sure. I think maybe that had something to do with it. Um, and that was before I even had any mods in the game. So I've been very lucky. I don't know. I My system is not that incredible. I don't even think it meets the recommended specs. It meets the minimum, but it doesn't... I don't think it meets all of the recommended specs. Um, so, knock on wood, I've had very good luck with not having crashes. Um, because no, I haven't. I haven't crashed in this whole two hours, and I, I normally don't. I, I've had maybe I've had I could count on one hand the number of times the game has crashed for me. So, um, it should have been the asset creator, the free, uh, 
like the free update that came with the DLC. Uh, I agree. I mean, th there were a lot of like nice updates to the game, but they were like they weren't new things added to the game for free. It was just updates to the broken game that they gave us. So that doesn't count. Um, Asset Creator would have been amazing. Um, and I, and I mean, I mean, I know they're working on it, but that would have been killer. Um, Rockin says, uh, the thing that has been putting me most off from CS2 is not having the asset editor. I need smaller train stations and stuff for smaller cities. So it's great for consoles. They will also get that. Um, yeah, no, I totally agree. So like, um, one of the cool mods that they have on, on PDX mods right now is uh, like a historical start where you can start with where you have trains unlocked from the very beginning. And I think that's like one of the coolest mods. Um, I'm not like using it right now because I'm just kind of screwing around and chit chatting now. But um, well, I love the idea of being able to start like a small city with a small train station, which is pretty realistic. Um, apologies if you can hear the garbage truck outside, by the way. Um, so the once and I'll say it again, I live in an alley. <laughs> so there's always lots of noise going on in there. Um, but yeah. Um the historical start would be is like such a cool mod and I want to be able to make use of that function, but I want something I want to make use of it without. Uh, let's find it without this. That's just too much. This is not historical at all. It's very updated, very new, very big. I want a small train station. I want little stuff like that. And when they, when they I know that people are going to go crazy with asset creation and making those kinds of things and making like you know smaller police stations and smaller fire stations and things like that which weirdly enough like our firehouse is actually pretty small and it's kind of perfect um but like that's that's like the only service asset that i feel like is like a normal small size i mean the police i guess the police station and the medical clinic are not too bad but like something smaller wouldn't be bad either you know um Vanilla Skylines has a PC too, and I loaded CS2 the other day and it didn't have the menus. <laughs> uh, just a map. Oh man. That sounds that's <laughs> Oh man. I've not I've not run into that problem yet either. Um if only they hadn't stuffed this launch out half baked. Yeah. I mean the, yeah, the game was. Uh they have had technical difficulties with the asset editor, which is which is why it's been delayed. Yeah. And I mean, I think like the biggest problem essentially is that they announced a release date and then they just weren't able to meet they were they weren't able to realistically meet that deadline. And then it was just it would have been even more of a nightmare for them to be like, just kidding, we're delaying it now for everybody. Like, they already had a riot on their hands by, like, uh, by announcing, like, a week beforehand that a lot of the stuff wasn't going to be there. Like, no mods, it's, uh, you know, no mods on release date or any of that stuff. No map editor, no asset editor. Like, they already had people rioting because of those things, which, which is fair. Like, you've made promises, it's, and we've given you money already, it's not an unreasonable expectation that you meet, you know, the, the criteria that you set. But sometimes, you know, it, it happens. And I, and I don't think it was Colossal Order that necessarily was like, we've got to push this out. You know, they have their own pressures, too. And it's like a whole friggin' mess, you know. But um, I had almost no crashes on the Thunderstore. Um, I know PDX is in beta, so I'm okay with it. Yeah. And, and that, too. Like, um... You know, we talked a little bit earlier about some of the problems with, like, the mods and that when you open the game, sometimes they're not all in there. Uh, like, when I originally, when I was setting up this stream, I loaded the game, went to go open up this map, and it, like, wasn't in there, even though I had already downloaded it. I had opened it earlier yesterday. Um, so I just had to, like, close the game and open it again, and it was there. Um, which is, like, annoying. It's, like, a little bit of, you know, it's not ideal. Obviously, you want your stuff to be there, but it is in beta, so, like, there's going to be some stuff, you know? I love the historical star. I used it in Thunderstore. Yeah. I, 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 I love the idea of it. I haven't found, you know, like a reason to use it specifically yet. Um, but, and also cause I want like a smaller train station to make it 
a little bit even more realistic, but yeah. Um, the massive welfare office, those things too. Um, everything, there's like so many buildings that could just be like smaller. And I mean, I think it's just funny because I, I, I think they've designed the game to like be big city stuff. Like I've talked about it before that I, I think the the game really pushes you to increase density a lot. I mean, I think with some of the recent updates, like we're not having any of the the high rent problems here right now, which is great. Like nobody wants, nobody is complaining about wanting higher density yet. Um, so that's, that's good. Um, and I think, you know, because of the recent, uh, the update and kind of the readjusting of the land value stuff that that's helped, but I still think the game generally pushes you to building up basically, right? Like wanting to build higher density and, uh, not everybody wants to do that. Of course, right. When I say that we're not having high rent problems, we get a high rent problem. Um, but so, you know, they're they're expecting that you're going to be building these really big cities that are going to need those really big, chunky assets. But so many people love to build small towns, you know, with sprawling skylines in the background. But like these tiny little suburbs, not even suburbs, tiny little like podunk neighborhoods that are, you know, one stop sign kind of thing going on. And uh, just because it's, you know, it's real life. There's a lot of places like that. You know, somebody out there, we all, you know. I, everybody obviously grew up in one of those places, but everybody knows one of those places or knows somebody from a place like that, you know? Um, I think it was the automated level of detail for the asset editor. Um, I mean, that sounds like legit. I, I, I imagine there's a lot of logistics to go into creating assets for this and, and having people be able to do that at home and import them into the game and upload them to places where everybody else can put them in their game. Like, I know it's not so simple as just like, here's an asset I built. You know what I mean? It, it's a process. The extra info mod for like, for houses. I know there was a one that would tell you like specifically how much rent they were paying and things like that, which is kind of cool. I don't really have, I haven't personally had much use for that, but like that would be helpful for sure. And, uh, and doubling the game hardware requirements. Yeah, that was, that was a big one. Uh, a big setback for a lot of people le you know, led to a lot of people not being able to play the game um, and people who might have already had paid for the game and now they found out that they weren't going to be able to use it. They weren't going to be able to play. Um, I use historical start mostly to build small far farms and quarries. Yeah, I had a uh, I did a live stream a while back started with a CPP's custom map when it was like the only custom map available basically way before our uh, way before even thunderstorm mods and stuff and um I don't think that mod was out yet to be able to play. Um, but I would have tried to do it for that one, for that stream, because I built like a small farming neighborhood. Um, uh, you can build farms and quarries out of the gate instead of having to get, yeah. Which is, just makes so much sense because that's usually how a lot of towns start is with like an industry like that. You know, they start farming and then they kind of branch out into things as they industrialize and specialize and things like that. And, and no, they don't, they don't take very long to, I mean, you can hit like the first two milestones just building roads if you wanted to, but still. Uh, to start getting the needed signature buildings going, I don't spam them, but I start them going. Wait, did I miss something? Oh, 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 to, uh, for the signature buildings for like the, um, for these guys. Yeah. Because it requires like, what, 10 of each or something like that? Uh, it doesn't say it because I have it unlocked, but, um. Yeah, to get started on those, because those are super cool, too. Like, they prove, first of all, they're, like, massive and, like, fill out a lot of space, which is nice, because sometimes, sometimes there's, like, empty space that you just don't want to zone, but you want something big in there, and, like, we only have so many assets. So some of those big, chunky assets are really cool, and they provide, like, a ton of jobs and a lot of benefits to the city, so they're super cool to have, like, early on. Um, but you can only get to them after building 10 of those and after only, you know, hitting the fourth milestone and... Blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of annoying, but. Uh, to BH, the game does run kind of on kind of low hardware. It's just the game ran bad on every PC when it came out. Yeah. Since it wasn't optimized. Um, like, I, mine ran o okay for like a little while. Um, I, I never got to like massive populations or anything during those first couple weeks of, of the game being released. So. 
by the time I got to like a big city of like 20 to 30,000, there had already been a lot of optimization stuff going on. So, um, but I know people like jumping in right out of the gate, we're making these, you know, crazy intense cities and they're like, my game exploded. I'm like, well, yeah, which it, it shouldn't do, but like they did warn people that that would happen. So. Then I plop that godforsaken massive cargo train station. Yeah. Um. And yeah, a cargo station should be pretty big, but um, but they are they are pretty massive. Let's take a look at it. The cargo train terminal. It's you know like half of the size of my whole neighborhood so far right here. Which I mean, yeah, they're they're big. Of course they are, but um, but not every asset has to be that big. Like a small train station would be cool. Um. Big with two hundred citizens in uh, in the days of early railroad, they ran off platform next to the passenger platforms. True, yeah. So I mean, they don't have to be that huge, but um, I, I mean, it's, yeah. And it's just, I just, I feel like one of the things that is missing is um, what the hell is going on over here? Um, one of the things that is missing is just like the ability to build smaller. Um, because not everybody wants to build huge cities. In fact, so many people who play the game don't even like to build big cities at all. They just like to build little small towns all over a big sprawling map, which is, you know, a lot of fun to do. Uh, the elementary school is pretty big, yeah. I mean, got like, what, seven, eight houses here taking up the same amount of space, just lengthwise. Uh, the update before Christmas break did a lot, yeah. For sure. Before the game had major issues, random potato mode, and getting literally 5 FPS in places with a lot of sims. And after that update, you would get 30. Um, yeah, I think the potato mode was, like, definitely one of the worst things. I remember, like, one of my very early episodes, we were getting, like, some really weird texture on the medical clinic. Like, it was just, like, a weird block. And uh, a part of that was just, like, my settings and, like, fiddling around with stuff but like it had been working before and then all of a sudden it went weird when i was you know right in the middle of recording of course but yeah <clears throat> i do i also do think some people have pretty unrealistic expectation of how fast the game can improve since it had only been out for five months i think it was i mean that that i i don't disagree with that necessarily um it's more just that i think like they weren't expecting the game to be so unoptimized from the beginning. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people would have just rather had a game release five months later than wait five months being able to play a game, but, like, not being able to play very well. Um, but, that, like I said, you know, they kind of locked themselves into that October 24th release date and they would have really had a riot on their hands if they said, we're going to delay the whole game another five months. Um, would it have been the better thing to do? Probably. But, um, but it's, it's hard once you've already, like, given that, given that firm release date. Like, you do get kind of locked into it because people would have, people would have been insanely pissed to, uh, to have to wait another five months to play at all. And it's like, you know, we have this, you know, different expectation on either end of those two things. Like, as the person who made the game and as the person playing the game, we want the game. But we want it to be perfect at the same time. We want it to be done. But we want it. You know? Like, I think a lot of people, if you ask them, they, they say that they would have waited, they would have wanted to wait for a game to be finished. But if you were already expecting to play it at this time, at X time on X date, you were going to be, you were not going to be happy waiting five months to play it. If they had told us they were going to release it on October 24th and then they were like, it's coming soon. And then they were like, it's coming later than we thought. They might've had a different situation, but, um, it, you know, who knows? It's all speculation, of course, obviously, right? We can't know now. I mean, when people started dooming very much last month. 
I mean, yeah, I, people people get passionate, I'll say, I guess, about about these kinds of things. Um, but we're getting on to we're getting on to two and a half hours here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna round off with one more thing. I don't even know if that person is still here that was interested in looking at these buildings, but I'll round off with one last thing, and that's gonna be checking out the uh, um, the signature buildings from the European theme for the beach ash stuff. We looked at the other the North American ones way earlier, um, so we'll we'll close it out with checking these out. So this is the Extreme Athletes Villa. This is the uh, first tier signature building for uh the european theme of the beach asset stuff so it's like 2500 tiles or something like that i think um i like that it's like smaller than some of them like this one's huge which is nice i love that there's a huge one but like sometimes you want like this would fit this would not fit with like on a regular place with a lot of with other houses this one you can put next to like regular houses and it fits in it's got like a cool Freaking uh, like skate park in the back. Then we have the golfers villa, which if you watched, you know, the most recent episode of Pickleton, we we finally we unlocked this one by cheating, but just to make my golf course build. Um, but it just it just fits so well. I had to do it. Love it. I'm obsessed with this asset. I think it's great. And like, if this is the kind of stuff that we can expect from like Colossal Order to give us, I I really can't wait to see what other people give us. But um. <clears throat> um but yeah so that's that's the second tier i think it i think it requires ten thousand cells of european themed beach asset zoning to unlock this one and then the third one is the royal villa which again i like that it's kind of like on a smaller scale somewhere in between these two looks like it has like an underground parking so that's kind of neat um definitely Definitely like this one too. I, I I prefer the European ones to the American ones. Not gonna lie, the the North American ones are they're fine. The European ones are amazing for this asset pack. Um, they, uh, I'm glad you liked it. The golf course. I had so much fun building that. I've been wanting to build a golf course for like a long time. Uh, just because they're like a fun thing to do. I don't know. Um, and with with some of the tools that we have available. Like, I just, I couldn't resist. And especially once I saw this building and it's even called the Golfer's Villa, I was like, I got to do it now. This is, this is the time. So yeah, I had a lot of fun building it. I'm glad, I'm glad people enjoyed it. I'm really pleased with how it came out too. So, um, one of my biggest issues with CS2 is very little animations of Sims. Yeah, that, that too. That's a, that's a, that's a big one. And, and I hope they fix that. Like, I hope they add those in eventually. And I know it's, probably going to be taxing on people's systems but like that's one of my you know people love watching your sims go around and do stuff it's like so cool to sit in cs1 and watch them like watch the little people play their baseball games in the big stadiums super fun stuff so i, I really hope that they add that in too um definitely agree that that's one of the things that are definitely missing uh, oh and they did say that more animations are coming so good perfect um, but yeah, <clears throat> I think I've clearly been talking, uh, way too much. I think that's why, that's what the tickle in my throat is. I've just been rambling for two and a half hours straight. Um, but this was an awesome stream. I had so much fun, uh, hanging out with everybody and talking. I love talking about this game. I'm, you know, obviously, obviously I have a channel about it. I'm a nerd for it. Love being able to talk about it with people, uh, who get it. So thank you all so much. And thank you, JLA, for the, the super chat. That's awesome. Thank you all so much for joining me. I had such an awesome time just talking about this game. I know we didn't really build much, <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's that's the fun thing about live streams is getting to, getting to chat with people and, and getting to nerd out about the game. So, um, you know, I, let me, before I go ahead and, and knock off, I want to actually also, in case you aren't already um, in the server, I have a Discord server. Um, not that. Want? I mean, I'm I'm like multitasking, which is never a good thing. Um, I'm my, I'm like in the wrong button here. Okay. I like keep. I don't want. 
Okay, I'll have to put it in. I'll have to put it in somewhere. I'll put it in like the description or something. Um, and it's and it's in the links to all of my other videos. I think there's always a link to. Actually, you know what? I think it's in the description already. What am I talking about? It should already be in the description. A link to the Discord. If you're not in it already, come hang out with us. We can talk about City Skylines all day, every day. So, um, thanks. Thank you everybody for joining. Um, I'll see you guys the next time. The next. I hope to see you guys the next time we do a live stream, and I hope to see you in the Discord and in the comments of my other videos. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and will enjoy a nice fire on your way out somewhere in the town. There it is. All right. <laughs> There's a fire to enjoy. Bye, everybody. Thank you all so much.